Right, so now we have the vehicle at full operating temperature. It's been driven. I'm going to run through a few of the numbers. As I said, this is just about data collection. Uh, 9,000 Ks, highway driven, one month old. So it's kind of like all driven, bedded, settled in. All normal. What are you going to see on a fairly new vehicle? Or in normally like new condition. So the target idle speed 700, same as the 1KDs. One thing I'd like to note with that, if you turn the aircon on, watch what happens. The idle up, so it's 850 is the target with the aircon compressor cut in. When the compressor cuts out, it drops back to 700. So that's the first note. Now I'm going to turn it back off again because we need all the accessories off for all these other readings. One of the most important ones, like always, is going to be the load. So the load on this vehicle, and it's going to vary. We need to see a number of these. But this is a new unmodified vehicle. It hasn't got any extra loads on the alternator, any extra batteries connected to the alternator. Um, the battery's in good condition. It's probably the best example. The load's sitting on 12.5%. Okay, so that's what that is. Now let's try and just move through a little bit. Let's see what else we've got. It's the easiest way here. Intake air, yeah, apparently it's 35 out here, so it's outside 30. So there you go, heat of the vehicle body, the metal and everything, heats the air up a little bit, same as a black snorkel, you know, if the sun's on it, it gets hot, so it, you do get some heat radiating through to the intake. Um, we're gonna go through. Um, we'll just have it there on the video so you can check anything at a later date. Alternate duty ratio is up around 40%. That's alright. Um, much like the 1KDs, the 150s were up a little bit, so they're back down a little bit. So around the 6.4 to 6.5 on the injection volume. And the feedback for idle once it's warm is around about 5. Feedback value is all pretty good, but you can see a number 4, it's on 0.5. So not abnormal like any other injectors to be up a little bit. Um, pilot 1 and Pilot 2 looks like about 315 to 320, pretty steady. So spec for that without looking it up, it's probably allowed to go a little bit under 300. But like other diesel systems, those Pilot 1 and Pilot 2 stay fairly steady. So that's what I'd expect to see. What we're seeing here is normal. Main injection periods you do see possibly jump up and down a bit sometimes. So, take note of what it is. You can see it moves around a lot from, let's say, 4 to 450 once it's warm. Went a little bit over 450. Haven't seen it go under 400, but it's gone close to 400. And I'd say, without looking it up, anything from a bit under 4 to uh, probably, my guess would be up around 650 is probably okay. So, there's actual specifications looking it up. And there's what you learn from working on vehicles and what would be sort of a normal range, you know, as a general guide. That's what we're talking about. Uh, pilot 1, Pilot 2, all the timing and everything. Obviously, that's what it is on these. It's a little bit different to the uh, 1KDs, the way they've done it with the timing there. But So take note of what it is. EJR motor duty, yeah, so it's not really showing us the EJR valve position like the 1KDs, which is a bit of a pain, it's a bit different. Um, not too sure what's going to happen with these intake systems. Some people think it's better, some people think it's worse. Definitely a um, very different setup, different design. So if we give it a bit of a rev, what happens? Because so, it's around... 12 to 19, right? The actual motor duty. So, as we load it up, it goes up, and as we back off, it goes down. Not completely closing. And now I was looking at it driving the vehicle. So, I wonder if the motor duty's kind of like the position, that's the position that flaps open, you know. It's the whole wording of it, so we'll have to look that one up and see what's going on there. Seems to be nothing real consistent anyway, unfortunately. 
Hmm. Not ideal. Anyway, have a look at some other readings. Catalyst differential pressure. That's a good one to make a note of. At idle now that it's warm, you can see it's moving around the high 70s into the 80s. So either say of 0 0.080. Right. I note that on the highway at 100 k's it was around either side of 0.090 so that's what normal is that's what it's going to come into possible issues with um, DPFs and that you might want to know what that reading is normally okay you can see the accumulation ratio now they've used the word ratio there I don't know if that's a good one to use I think in the last video when it was cold it was on 44% and then it was on 46 now it's on 48 so is that the percentage the DPF filter is full or is it yeah I don't know what exactly what that means again back to the books eventually when we get time I don't know if I want to know about it really then I might have to work on these anyway no, don't work on one GDs just trying to help them share some info um, I'm sure there's someone that can watch this and drop a comment in the video if that's possible or on the post where I've dropped a link because this one's going to be viewable with a link only at the moment, not public. Later on we might change that. I've got a whole heap of videos there that are viewable only with a link. One day when I've had enough I'll click it. Could be in 10, 20 years, butter boom, there's everything. And that's it, you know, there's a whole, it's going to be like an encyclopedia of diesel and Prado and information, you know, if you've got time to watch it all. Um, anyway, I just wanted to show you all these. We're getting through it. And what we can do, we'll do a little test to tell you which one's which were these. All right. The one that goes up is the torque converter. Are you watching? One's going to start going up a little bit more than the other. You can see number two, how it's going up. I've got it in drive with the foot on the braking accelerator. See how quick it goes up? This, I probably should do another video to explain the heat that gets generated in the torque converter. Okay, back to idle. Now look what we just did. We just pumped it from 65 up to 75 in the torque converter. Now that's gonna bleed through to the transmission temperature one in the pan. So number one is the pan, number two is the torque converter. Now that we're leaving it alone, you'll see the torque converter come down, but of course a percentage of that's gonna bleed into the temperature one in the pan. So you can see it's slowly going up. Right, now I'll give the engine just a free rev to get the air oil flowing a bit more and perhaps you'll see temperature 2 come down quicker and temperature 1 go up a little bit. Maybe not. Maybe we need to drive to get that down, but it's not an issue. I'm just saying be aware how your transmission works and when the torque converter is slipping. Anyway, another video, so I'll shut up about that. Too much information. Just collecting the data, remember? That's what we're doing. We're collecting the data on the new vehicle. I think that's about it. We'll go back to the top just because we can. In case you want to recap on anything. Let's have a look what the readings do when I put the aircon on. So let's do that. Let's go to the... We'll call this the main page. Other than load, this is the main page of importance. So that's where it's at. Let's uh, switch the aircon on because I'm getting hot in here. Well, you see that injection volume go up really high? That's why you've got to have all the accessories off. The aircon's the big one. If I want to sell you injectors, I just leave the aircon on all the time. <laughs> nah, it's all good. It's just what it is. If you need them, you need them. If you don't, you don't. Talked out many people from injectors. So it goes both ways. Alright guys, hope that video has helped. There's the information. If you haven't, subscribe. Important information coming your way. 
Encyclopedia Prado.